Hello everyone, my name is Clancis and welcome to the clan. Yes, we are officially known as the clan on these streets because now it's sitting at 77% of you who said we are calling ourselves the clan. But without further ado and with all that aside, let's get into this video because in the knockout and high court, we had Tumelo Mazala taking the stand. I was a little bit surprised to see him on the stand, even though the clan was predicting on a live that I did on Sunday, a week that will be uh, with your boy Clancy's. We did predict that either Tumelo Majala or the, one of the detectives is going to take the stand. Some people even said, no, it's going to be Yolanda. But I'm very glad that it is one of the people that were present in that house on the 26th of October, 2014. And of course, Tumelo Majala took the stand and I think he kind of like almost sung like a canary until he got to a part we all know what, which part that is. That's when the script that is handed over to them for the past nine years, started playing a role. And this time, I felt that he was so assertive that he wanted us to know whether we like it or not, to the day he dies, is going to stick to the gun that he is holding. But anyways, before we get there, let's get to his evidence in chief. Of course, he was asked about his relationship with Senzo Meiwa. He said they grew up together and they played together uh, in some few soccer clubs, like informal soccer clubs that you will find everywhere in the province of KZN and everywhere where there are black kids and then they played for a team called London Cosmos in Durban. And of course, they've been best friends. They went to the same school and uh, they've been best friends, basically. They did everything together. They come from one of Durban's township called Umlazi. I'm not quite sure which section that was, but anyways, we are not there. And so, of course, then he spoke about how Senzo Miwa then became a professional, professional soccer player and he started playing for Orlando Pirates as his keeper. And at a later stage, he also became the captain of Bafana Bafana as the goalkeeper as well there. Tumel Mandala then shared in his evidence in chief that when Senzo Miwa came to Johannesburg, he lived in two suburbs. The first one was Baklu and then later on Malberton. And he has visited Senzo Miwa in both these uh, residential areas or estates where he lived. So then he was asked about the 25th of October 2014 what he was doing and if he got a call from Senzo Meiwa, he said yes. He got a call from Senzo Meiwa around, uh, well, it was a bit late on that Saturday afternoon where Senzo Meiwa invited him for a party that was going to be held in Sunning Hill. I can't remember the person. I think it was a soccer player as well of some sort. And of course, um, and of course, Tomelo said he cannot take a transport at this point in time because it was too late. However, he's going to uh, climb and come to Johannesburg the following day being the 26th of October. And of course, Senzo Meiwa called him to find out if he got a message. And then he said he did not get any message. And then we found out that that message was supposed to be like a notification that money has gone into his account or something. And then just before Senzo would call him again, that's when the message came through. But the money was not deposited by Senzo Meiwa, but by Kelly Kumalo herself. It was an amount of 500 Rand for Dumelo to take a bus from Durban from Durban Station to uh, to spread view, I guess. So Tumelo then told Senzo that he is not going to be able to uh, to come now because it's already too late. However, in the following day, the 26th of October, he then went to Durban Station where he looked for a bus. And unfortunately, there was no bus that was coming to Johannesburg at that time of the morning. So there was apparently a lady that was doing like an informal type of transportation, like hitchhiking type of thing. And then uh, he said at first he was scared to take it because he was not sure because he doesn't know this lady but until he saw other people start entering the car that's when he kind of like gathered up some strength and then he went and then uh, of course he asked the lady as they were approaching Johannesburg if she could pass by spread view and drop him at a uh, 
it was called, off ramp but at a spread view off ramp and then he walked down the road to a uh, intersection by the robot to where he waited for Senzo Mayo. He said it was not too long before Senzo Mayo was X6 approached and uh, indeed they picked him up and in the car there were four people Senzo Mayo being the driver, Kelly Kumala being in the passenger seat, um, Togo sitting at the back with Zandile, and of course he joined at the back. And then they drove to a place where they sold food and alcohol, but he just said alcohol. And Togo said it was food and alcohol. There, uh, Senzo Mayo did not have cash on him. And of course, Zandile offered to give the 400 rand that she had. And uh, Senzo wanted to go in to buy, but Kelly said, no, let uh, Zandil and Togo go in. And I'm kind of like thinking, hmm, after finding out that Marbleton House only has two bedrooms, and on the 25th, um, Togo and Zandile slept at Marbleton House, nobody said who slept where. And I am kind of like thinking that when Longo found out about Zandile being with some other guy together with Kelly Kumalo and Senzo Meiwa and how ticked off he must have been because I think he knows the Marble Tin house that it only has two bedrooms. But now how does it look like on the inside though? Does it have like a studio coach, uh, a studio couch that turns into a bed? Or did Zandile and Mtogo, and I'm not saying they did anything, did they sleep in the same bed or on the same bed or in the same room? Well, we don't know. But I'm just trying to rub my two IQs together here because I did ask this question before. That who was, how that household looked like in Marbleton? Who slept where? Nobody says anything about who slept where. But anyways, we are not there. So anyways, after they bought the alcohol, then they drove to a house that he'd never been there before. Uh, he did not know at that time whose house that was. And then when they entered, there was a lady with babies. Uh, of course, now we know that it's Kelly Kumalo's mother and that is Kelly Kumalo's um, home, like her mother's house. And uh, of course, they greeted, they sat down and then... Uh, Makumalo made them food and then after they were done eating food they started watching Manchester versus Chelsea I think and then they, was, they started drinking their alcohol. Not too long after that a gentleman walked in without greeting and sat down and then uh, this is where I'm like wait a minute but isn't that to, um, Togo's story because uh, Tumelo says that he then looked at Senzo and asked who's this guy that just budged in without greeting. Remember, that is the same thing that Mtogo told us or told the court that he asked Senzo who's this guy that just walked in and sat down without greeting. And I was like, okay, never mind. It's my question was more like, did Mtogo, no Mtogo I mean, did Tumelo watch Mtogo's testimony? That is a big question, and I think the defense team needs to ask that question because there were too many similarities for me. Okay, the story can sound the same, but mimicking each other? Like, for example, Mtogo said he turned to Senzo and asked, who is this gentleman that just walked in without greeting and sat down? Tomelo said exact same thing. At the exact same time, I don't get it. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say here about each other mimicking each other. I don't know. So of course, Tomelo then explained how this, what was the sitting arrangement was like, which of course the way he was pointing at a picture that of course we can see as the people that are watching from home, officers listening in our cars, whatever the case was. And then he, uh, then after that, he speaks about how they ate after eating, they drank, and then at some, then uh, this person whom now they know as long way that be, that being Chico Twala's son of course this is Senzo Mewa telling Tumelo this is Chico Twala's son his name is Longwe and then of course Tumelo and Mtogo then decide to go out because Tumelo is a smoker he needed to smoke and of course they went outside of the yard where uh um Togo not Mtogo Tumelo smoked uh, they, he said they were there at least about 20 minutes and after he was done he took a pee and after taking a pee they went into the premises this is when Mtogo said no 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 you can't go into the house smelling with cigarette smoke rather go wash your hands so somewhere on the side of the house they used the outside tap he said he first brushed his teeth or washed his mouth with some water and then he washed his hands after that 
This is when uh, Senzo Meyer came out, stood by the kitchen door. Um, then he eventually came out. And I think at this point we're talking about whether they're leaving or about to leave. And then Kelly Kumala followed behind Senzo, uh, basically to inquire if they are leaving already. And then if they are, then they should rather uh, bid goodbye to their mother the proper way and then they can go. So they all went back inside, sat down. And not long after that, this is where the script begins, people. This is where the script begins. Because everything thus far that he said, I believe... But the only thing that I don't believe is the story where he's mimicking um, Togo's uh, assertion about Longwe's entry into the house. So that one I cast it aside. That is Togo's side of the story. So anyways, to cut that story, then you guys already know what's coming, right? He says that uh, in not much long before they started to leave, this is when Kelly Kumalo started talking about, he says he, she's, there were all kinds of topics that were being speak, spoken about. He doesn't remember, but he does remember Kelly Kumalo talking about some churches or something about churches. And then just as, as the, the, they were going on talking, then somebody walked into the house wielding a gun and then demanded for money and cell phones. Of course, when he was asked about what language did he use, he said he doesn't remember what language he used, but he does know that the person is a, is a Zulu speaker, but he doesn't remember in what language did he say this in, and then he was wielding a gun. And then as he was wielding a gun, this is when Longwe got up calmly, from what I understand from Tumelo, Longwe got up calmly and then pushed this person who's holding a gun, and then he walks out of the house through the kitchen door. Did not run, but walked out of the house. And then we never hear of Longwe until we hear of him at the hospital and Marble now with his father. And then, of course, he says that, and then this is when everybody got up. But he says he did not get up with everybody. And then to me, this is where it sounded a little bit like he was watching a movie because he said he started, he just didn't get up with everybody. But Senzo went for uh, suspect number one, managed to pin him against the wall. Kelly Kumalo managed to run into the bedroom uh, and locked herself up. And then uh, Makumalo and Zandile Kumalo took Tumelo's crutches and started beating on suspect number one. And I thought it was suspect number two. And say, he says that when the scuffling started, this is when he realizes that, oh my goodness, it's actually two guys. Now, the, tall, the, the, the second guy is taller. He's wearing a hoodie jacket, not a hoodie. So people who see me wearing a hoodie, that's not a hoodie jacket. That's a hoodie sweater that I'm wearing. So don't come for me from this point on when I'm wearing my hoodie sweater. That is not a hoodie jacket. But uh, Tumelo says it was a hoodie jacket. And then he described the suspect number one having been shot wearing a hat with dreads. That's what he said. And uh, suspect number two, he was tall and uh, he was wearing a hoodie. That is what he remembers. And then, uh, of course, this is when he realizes, oh my goodness, suspect number two is also in the house. And then he tried to run after Kelly. And then when he ran after Kelly, then, okay, what did he do? And then all of this is observing like a spectator. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, but you have an opportunity to, Melo, to run out and go cry for help. Oh my goodness, why the scuffling is going, you have a cell phone in your pocket. You, you and I had the same cell phone around that time because you said you had an X, uh, X3 Mini. Is it S3? Yeah, S3 Mini. I remember I had the same one as well. It was like a neon green or something like that. You could have just popped it out of your pocket and called 10 triple one. But no, you don't do that. Instead, you are watching a scuffling going on between Senzo Mayo with suspect number one, between Makumalo, Zandile with your crutches hitting suspect number one. The next thing, I don't know what goes on though. While uh, Senzo Mayo has pinned suspect number one against the wall, against the door, against the door. He said at the wall at first and then now it's against the door. And then somewhere, somehow, uh, Senzo manages to leave suspect number one who's armed by the way let's not forget that grabs uh suspect number two 
kills him in like a uh, like a crucifixion like uh, manner and this is when Tumelo finally takes some action and he throws a punch on the temple of suspect number two and this is when he hears a gunshot and then when he hears a gunshot he jumps he runs into the bedroom he says he, he jumps into the second bedroom locks himself in and i'm thinking this is opportunity number two to start dialing 10 triple one but no what Tomelo does takes his cell phone pushes it or uh, hides it under a pile of blankets he sees a baby that he was asleep now he's awake because of the commotion that is going on on the other side probably woken up by the gunshot now, what is he saying to the baby? He doesn't say anything. Um, comfort the baby, hide the baby. I don't know. What would you do when you found yourself in an opportunity like that and you see a small baby? Wouldn't you be protecting this baby? Wouldn't you be trying some other things? Wouldn't that even convince you to take the phone out of those blankets and call Temple, temple 1? Come, come on, people. I, I, I was like, whoa, what is happening right now? <laughs> Where is Longwe? Where is Longwe? Because he's supposed to be out there calling the ambulance, calling the police, calling the neighborhood. But no. Like a heartless person that he is, he was out of there. Waltz out. He did not run. So now Tumelo says that after a while, then he started hearing people speaking normally. And this is when he realized that the gun or the intruders had left. So he tried to open the door, but the door would not open. So he's not sure if it was Mtogo or somebody else. It must have been Mtogo that opened for him. And then he went to the living room. Mm. Now, this is where what Mtogo had said, but later changed his tune. This is what Mtogo has said. I'll remind you. When he came from the Naches, he walked into the, the Kumalo household and saw Senzo Meiwa between a sofa and the stand. Oh, no, he said he, Ntoko was, no, 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 I'm lying. He said that Senzo Meiwa was lying in the living room by the same couch they were sitting at. And then Zandile Kumalo said he, when she peeped through the bathroom door, she saw Senzo Meiwa staggering into the living room and went between the TV stand and the sofa. And then guess who confirms that? It is Tumelo's uh, evidence in chief. He says when he walked from the bedroom after Mtogo had opened for him with a kitchen utensil, whether it's a knife or a spoon, then he went to the living room and this is where he sees uh, Senzo Meiwa lying between a sofa and a TV stand. Now, what is the truth? Was he lying across between the kitchen, the passage and the living room or was he between a sofa and a TV stand? Which one is it? So he says that he then sees that there was a bullet hole through Senzo Meiwa's t-shirt. There was some blood splatters, but not too much. But he could see there was a, a bullet wound by, on his left-hand side of his, of his chest. And then the question is, Tome, uh, Ntogo said that he was gasping and then he was trying to say something. But because he was breathing through his wound, he could not say anything. Uh, Tumelo doesn't say anything about whether uh, Senzo was gasping or he was trying to talk, whether he was dead or still alive. But he says, wait for this one. He says that after that, then when he he got into the living room, this is when people start entering the house. This is the same thing that Mtogo said. This is when people start entering the house. The neighbors, he remembers the neighbors, uh, young men came to assist them in trying to carry uh, Senzo Meiwa into, the X, into his car, the, X, the BMW X6. And, but because he was too heavy, he was too heavy. He doesn't mention anything about anybody suggesting to call, uh, what did to take him to the hospital because uh, he seems to be dying. He doesn't mention anything like that. He doesn't mention anything about anybody calling an ambulance or calling the police. He says then he tried to carry to hold Senzo from the back, the meaning backward, as he's gonna basically carry him, like holding him underneath his arms. Now, my question is if a person that is still alive, they're not that heavy when they are still alive because themselves, their body is still pretty much uh, what do you call this flexing, and also I think also assisting you to help them live them. But when you are dead, you are limp. 
and that is when you are at your heaviest because you are not in control of your body. And he says that Senzo was so heavy that they had to take a break or an interval before they carried them again into the exes. And now this is where I'm also confused once again. In Zandile's evidence in chief, she said she ran into the X6 and from the other side of the, the X6, she assisted in pulling Senzo Meiwa into the vehicle. But no, uh, what is name? Tumelo says that it, it was him who went on the other side of the, the car and pulled Senzo Meiwa again from the arms into the vehicle, meaning head first and then the rest of his body. He said that is when he sat on the left-hand side of the, of the vehicle at the back and Togo came in the middle. And I thought it was some Togo's evidence in chief where he said he is the one who sat by the left-hand side of the door and then it was Tumelo in the middle and then uh, Zandile Kumalo on the, on the right-hand side of uh, the X6. And then another thing that I got confused was Remember, Mtogo said, because Senzo Meiwa's body was by, uh, what do you call this, this part of his body was by him, he would hold his hand to check if he's still alive. If the hand was still, uh, what do you call this, it was still stiff, that means he was still alive. But if it fell, that means he was no more. And Tumela doesn't say anything about that activity that was done by um, Togo. But at the same time, Togo said that the reason why he knows this, that this happened is because his gene was filled with Senzo Meiwa's blood. But now, I'm, I'm, and unless I got it wrong, unless I did not hear Togo properly, do correct me if I did not hear Togo's testimony correctly. When he said that it was him who was holding Senzo, uh, this part of the body, because he was also able to talk to him and lift his hand to check if his hand was lifting or not. And then remember, Togo said when they got to the hospital, he was the last person that was left in the car with Senzo. While everybody ran out and, and, and got themselves nurses and a stretcher. So now I'm a little bit confused here. But anyways, that's besides the point. Kelly Kumal was the one that was driving. She was speeding down the road. Even Zandile cautioned her that if she drove any faster, they were going to uh, roll over. So, of course, uh, they get to the hospital or the clinic. He says he's, sure, he's not sure if it's a private hospital. He's not sure if it's a clinic or a hospital. He says, but I'm sure it's a hospital. They got there. Everybody go, went out, got a stretcher, and then they took Senzo Meiwa into the hospital. And they all followed it. Then they went into like a lobby area of the hospital. Not so long after that, a nurse or a doctor came out with a piece of uh, printing and he thinks it was an x-ray of Senzo Meiwa. And then he, the doctor, who's a female doctor or a female nurse, asked for an elderly person. And this is when Kelly Kumalo's mother, not top saying, but uh, uh, Kelly Kumalo's mother went into that room where she was taken to, the next thing they hear her is screaming. And uh, Tomelo said, when they asked for an elderly, he just knew that it was bad news. I think as well, I would also know that, wow, this is bad news. And they heard a scream and that's when everybody started crying. And then he asks that if he can go see Senzo Meiwa. But remember Togo's testimony, uh, 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 what do you call this, evidence in chief, that when an elderly person was asked, he followed that's what he said. He followed. And then that is when he saw that Senzo Meo was normal because they had covered him. Now we are hearing that actually, no. Kelly Kumalo's mother went in. She started screaming on the other side, crying. And that's when everybody knew that uh, he's gone. And then Tumelo asked if he can go see uh, what is his name? Uh, Senzo Meiwa. This is when he, he went in and then he unveiled him. And he says the first thing that he did was to unveil him. The second thing that he did was to ask him a question like, why did you bring me here? Did you bring me to come and see this? I, find, I, I, felt, I felt that. I don't want to lie. I felt that. I felt that. I was like, oh, my goodness, this, this is painful. This is painful. But anyways, he says not too long after that, Kelly Kumalo walks in. And what does Kelly Kumalo do? She starts looting. Yeah, Kelly Kumalo started looting. Because remember Zandile's uh, evidence in chief? She said it was her who went into the room to see Senzo. 
And then she was speaking to him. Not long after that, Kelly followed. And Kelly started talking to him. And then she started removing earring or an earring he was wearing, a watch that he was wearing, and all other valuables that he had on him, Kelly took them. But now we are hearing that actually it was Tumelo who was in the room and then Kelly came while he was in the room and then this is when Kelly started looting. Let's call it for what it is. Because the question is, where are those things today? So Senzo Mayo said that a nurse or a doctor came in and then asked them to leave the room so that, I don't know, prepare him or whatever the case is. He said at this point when he left the room, this is when he sees Mandisa and some few people coming into the hospital. And no later than that, a scuffle between uh, Kelly Kumalo, Mandisa and her friends and Zandile. And, and then he even said, I saw pieces of hair on the floor. Then we heard him Togo's evidence in chief. We heard in Togo's evidence in chief is that actually when that scuffle or that fight took, uh, took place, Mandisa was with him because he did not want her to get involved in that fight. It was just uh, Mandisa's friends with Kelly Kumalo. But uh, Tomelo says, no, Mandisa was part and parcel of that broil. And then I don't know, she whipped Kelly Kumalo's hair and it was all over the floor. And this is also Zandile's evidence in chief uh, that Mandisa assaulted Kelly at the hospital, pulled her by the hair. That is why uh, she even said that is why on television, when we saw her carrying the baby wearing a duke, that's because as a result of that uh, fight between Mandisa and Kelly Kumalo. So then Togo says that um, after that, soccer players started arriving. Everybody started arriving. He assumed that they were all arriving from the party that they were supposed to have been initially, that he was initially invited for by Senzo Meiwa. Now everybody now is arriving. Everybody is crying and everybody wants to see Senzo Meiwa. And my commander was like, Whatever happened to the next of kin? Um, <clears throat> what happened to the hospital asking for a next of kin? Whatever happened to that? Because the person that went and identified Senzo Mayo's body is not the next of kin. Kelly Kumal is not related to Senzo Mayo in any way. Mtogo, Tumelo, all of them, they are not related to Senzo Meiwa. So now why the hospital allowed all these people robbing the Mewa family of being the first ones to identify their child? The disrespect the hospital showed to the Mewa, the disrespect that everybody showed to the Mewa by going and viewing, uh, what's his name, Senzo Mewa's body, to a point where Kelly Kumali started looting. All that stuff was supposed to be taken either by his mother or one of his parents. But no. Some girl from Joburg claiming to either be the wife because we are still going to come to the X6 that she refused with. She held Senzo Mayo's BMW hostage. She refused with his ID. She refused with his BMW X6. She refused with his clothes. Even when the brother had arrived in Malberton and asking for those things, she said, no, these things belong to the father of my child. So for me, the biggest highlight was when Dumelo pointed out at suspect number two, no, actually accused number two in court and said he was suspect number two that entered the house that night. And in my mind, I even looked at suspect number two who looked a little bit scary, I must say, and he was laughing or smiling or whatever the case was. The second thing that was a highlight for me was when uh, Advocate Mnisi brought some drama. This is after the long break where he wanted to let the court know that when, him to when, uh, when Tumelo left the stand, he pointed at the five accused and said, is the Azibosh Zinja, meaning let the dogs go to jail or something like that. And of course, uh, Dumelo was called into order by the judge. For the first time, this judge calls a witness into order. I was quite surprised. So in essence, my thoughts about this entire uh, evidence in chief by Tumelo Madlala is that, okay, everything else, and there are some few other things that we knew that we heard, and I don't think that he stuck to the script that was handed over to him because I felt that there were parts where he was telling the truth. 
for example, his heartfelt anger at this lady, Buteleze, which I'm also very upset about. The second person that I'm very most upset about is this Soweto um, a glassy person. I think he's a dishonest author that no South African should buy his book as far as I'm concerned. If this is the type of an author you are, sir, you are wrong to have done what you did. If you are going to interview a subject, interview and then reflect what they had said to you in your book. You don't go and start writing your own things. Irrespective of what you believe, because I think at this point in time, when this Soweto person was writing this book, I think it was in collaboration with uh, this Butelez lady who wanted uh, Tomelo to not mention the fact that intruders entered the house. As a matter of fact, he says that she kept saying that do not say that there were intruders that entered the house on the 26th of October. I think uh, this Butelez person looked at the two boys and said, okay, which one are we going to torture and which one are we going to treat with kid glove? And they thought, okay, because Tomelo is the best friend and grew up with Senzo Meiwa, that is a danger zone. Let's go for this one who met Senzo Meiwa along the way and let's turn him into whatever it is that they did to him in Pretoria that I am still very upset about and I think um, Togo still needs to continue with his uh, criminal case against this Mutelezi woman. But other than that, Soweto is a liar and I think he needs to be dealt with uh, in in a legal way. I hope his book is gagged. I don't know if it was released. I think that book needs to be gagged. And it should never see the light of day because he says it is filled with lies. He did not say the things that are written in that book. So now even a court of law has not even made a pronouncement whether there was an intruder or there were intruders in that house on the 26th of uh, October 2014. Now you are writing something that is not even pronounced by a court of law. What kind of a human being are you? For real. The third highlight for me was the fact that uh, Chico Twala went to Malberton with Longwe. And then when he got to Malberton, he then met with Tumelo for the first time. And then he inquired about who Tumelo was. And Kelly Kumalo then told Chiko Twala that this is Senzo Mewa's friend. They grew up together. His name is Tumelo Malala. And then the shocking part for me was when Chiko Twala asked Kelly Kumalo if she would like to go on a holiday. <laughs> I'm like, it must be nice. Somebody dies in your presence. Not even his body cold yet and already you are offering pina coladas in some probably island somewhere in the Maldives ah uh, come on Chico Twala what kind of a human being are you this woman is supposed to be grieving if indeed intruders did enter that house and secondly she had a newborn baby at that time why would she just leave her baby and go for a holiday what kind of a man are you I think my other highlight, which is the fourth, was uh, Tumelo not being invited at Senzo Mewa's funeral. It so happened by a strike of like, I suppose, uh, that it was Sia, the cousin of Senzo Mewa, who happened to have the risk banned for him to enter Moses Mabida Stadium for Senzo Mewa's funeral. And secondly, I would have thought that Tumelo would be one of the people that are VIPs sort of at the funeral because he grew up with Senzo Mayo and the Mayo family knew who Tumelo was. To find out that he was just tossed out there in the cold, that to me was like, wow, that's cold people. And of course, I think the Mayo was at this point in time, they were pretty suspicious of uh, Tumelo. And whatever stories, because he said that after he left Johannesburg and went back to Durban, he went to uh, L uh, section at Imlazi where Senzo Mewa's memorial service was being held. And then he realized that the Mewa uh, family is not there or the parents were not there. So he thought instead of telling the people what had happened at that memorial service, let him first go and relay the story to Senzo Mewa's family. When he got to Senzo Mewa's family, uh, he entered and he saw his mother sitting on the mattress mourning. While in Africa, we sit on mattresses with candlelights that burn without uh, burning out. And then, of course, you are in mourning period at that point. And then he sat down and th the first thing that Senzo Mayo's mother asked him was, how is it possible that you are driving my dead child's vehicle? And this is when he says he does not have any authority on Senzo Mewa's belongings because it was Kelly Kumalo who insisted 
because the BMW X6 belonged to the father of her child and therefore she's the one who's allowed to drive it. This lady really wanted to be the main wife here. She was playing the main wife role and this is why she refused the ID. Your person has just died. Of course, the family are going to need the ID. What do you want the ID for? We already know you did a swim swap. But now what were you intending to do because the brother was there looking for those things so that they can start, uh, what do you call this, uh, arranging for his funeral? But you are saying no. Were you the one who going to arrange the funeral? As who? So my fifth highlight was the fact that uh, Senzo Mewa's father started threatening uh, Tomelo and then he reported to Butelezi about these threats because at this point he trusted Butelezi in good faith thinking that Butelezi was there to help but Butelezi had other agendas that he later learned about and uh, this Butelezi lady then said, okay, let's put you through a witness protection program. Uh, you are going to lie that you are in Cape Town. You are also going to lie that you are in Riches Bay or something like that. And then he said, okay, fine. Uh, if I take this witness protection program, I want my child to come and live with me because she's a school. It's, uh, the child is a school going kid. And so, of course, the person that they assigned was some white lady who would pick him, from, pick him up from Pavilion Hotel. I think this is where the the witness protection program was at and of course he realized that these people were lying to him all the promises that they've made they have not delivered or materialized and this is when he pulled out of the witness protection program three weeks later and then of course an indemnity by the police was given to him to sign so that if anything happened to him the police would not be held accountable so I'm thinking, okay, of course, the Senzo Meiwa family, they are aggrieved. They want answers. And of course, they are not going to be kind to you, whom they know was the best friend of Senzo Meiwa. And they cannot understand why you are keeping the truth from them. Don't you at least owe them some kind of truth and say, listen, this is the truth. This is what had happened. But no, since, uh, but no uh, Tumelo takes the stand and says, he will stick to the story that they were intruders that enter the house to the day he dies. There you go. We will never hear the truth coming from anybody in that household on the night of Senzo Mewa's uh, death. All of them are not gonna tell us who killed Senzo Mewa. Tumelo has already led the way and he was assertive about it and then he wants us to understand that. And my sixth highlight in his evidence in chief was when he pointed at accused number two and how adamant he was about the fact that it is um, accused number two that was um, that was suspect number two in the house on the 26th of October. He says the first thing that he remembers very well is that when Senzo Mayor pinned him against the wall and then he came and put, gave him a punch, he did see him. He had a, uh, a round mouth type of beard trimming, something like me. Of course, mine. Yeah, it's something like me. He says he remembers that. Then I started looking at uh, um, and then I started looking at accused number two. But then the shoulder of Baloy was just blocking me because I wanted to see if he has like hair that kind of like grew along his cheeks, so that I can see if uh, he would cut his hair in a round mouth type of like this, I suppose. But I couldn't see because the shoulder was blocking me. And then I keep seeing accused number two talking to accused number one and they were giggling and they were laughing. I'm not quite sure what they were laughing about, but probably if he is indeed the guy that was there, he's probably is like, dude, this guy is good at uh, with his memory. Or if he's not the, the, the right guy, he's probably saying this guy is crazy. Probably was drunk that night. And then my seventh highlight was the fact that he participated in the Netflix uh, documentary. He says that it was Fiso uh, Meiwa who had come to ask him if he can be part of the Netflix uh, documentary. Remember, even with the book with Soweto, it was Fiso who came to Tumelo. And Tumelo thought, in good faith, let me do this. But the second time around, I think he had some doubts, like once beaten, twice shy type of thing. Uh, Tumtogo said he did not trust anything that came from Sviso after that. So that is why he was not party to the Netflix documentary. But Tomelo said the reason why he was persuaded to do the Netflix documentary is because Sia, remember Sia at uh, Senzo Mayor's funeral, was kind enough 
to give Dumelo a wristband to enter Moses Mabida Stadium so that he can attend Senzo Mayo's uh, funeral, as well as him transporting uh, transporting him during the funeral where they were stuck in Chesterville because they couldn't proceed to the graveside. So I think he thought he was he owed uh, Sia a favor, hence he participated in the Netflix uh, documentary. And then he said, yeah, he participated in the Netflix documentary. Of course, the producers, they wanted photographs of him and Senzo. He said there was this camera that he always carried along with him. And then he gave them the, the photos and made some agreements with the producers of the Netflix documentary. And then he said there is nothing that he said in the Netflix documentary that is any different of what he's saying in court today. It's the same thing that he said in the Netflix documentary and it's the same thing that he is saying here in court. The eighth, uh, <clears throat> the eighth highlight for me was when he was asked about attending a parade and he said he never attended a parade before. But I thought, didn't you go to the GP's uh, police station where he, he said they were put in different rooms? But Zandile and Togo said they were put in a boardroom and then they were called one by one into the one-way mirror uh, parade. And he was told that the people on the other side can't see him, but he can see them. And then he said he did not identify anybody. When he said that, I saw Baloy's face turning pink. It was like shocked. Then I was like, uh-oh, Tumelo went off the script. This is not how he was coached. But of course, I think that was a truthful moment for uh, Tumelo on the stand. Then he talked about the first time, which is my ninth highlight, when he said that the first time that he knew that accused number two was suspect number two was when he came the first time, that is the nullified trial, and he saw accused number two, and then this is when he knew that this is the guy who was suspect number two that entered the house on the 26th of October 2014. And he was asked, how do you know? He says, you will never forget a face that you saw that has done something like that. And then he says that this is why he knows that accused number two, it is suspect number two that was the intruder on that night in, in question. And the interesting part for me, which is my highlight number 10 and final, he said that even though he knows this is accused number two, that was suspect number two in the house on the 26th of October 2014, but he can't explain how he knows this, this, is, sus uh, this is accused number two that was uh, suspect number two in the house. In my mind, I'm thinking, but that, what kind of evidence is that that you are submitting to the court? It's either it is or it isn't. And you'd say how you know it is. But when you say, I can't explain it, the court would throw that away. Seriously, this is inadmissible. We want factual things here, things that you know for a sh for fact that it is suspect number two who, who is now accused number two. Of course, Tumelo was very adamant and even I think he looked directly into uh, accused number two and said he knows that it is him. And he said he even remembers who I am. I think he said something like that. He knows that it was him who was suspect number two that was present in that house as an intruder. Oh yeah, my other highlight, which is a bonus highlight, or we say a highlight number 11, was about Butelezi and the second, doc uh, the second docket. And he was asked about the second docket and he said he laughed. He said, well, anyways, he has no respect for Butelezi anymore, but anyways, he would be very glad to see this docket number two executed so that this lady, Butelezi, can come and explain to the court how this docket came about. How did she come to a conclusion about this second docket? And I agree with uh, Dumelo on this one. I think Butelezi needs to be called and then tell us or tell the nation how did she come about with docket number two or 375? Is it 375? And also, what did she suspect? What is it that prompted her to say, mm -mm, there was never intruders. These are the people in the house that know the truth and therefore uh, they need to be arrested. And the question now is, and the question now is, why are they arrested? Why is Kelly Kumalo, if Kelly Kumalo is not going to take the stand, then arrest her charge her for the murder of Senzo Meiwa so that we can get the truth out of her. I see all the, the what do you call this, organizers on, uh, what do you call it? I see all, organ uh, no, I see all events organizers dropping her and I, I think it will put some pressure, but I don't think she's phased in any way. 
because I think somebody somewhere is going to support her. We even seen some people busy supporting her. For me, I'm indifferent about uh, what do you call this cancel culture. Uh, I've said this uh, in my life before that I believe in the innocence until proven, proven guilty. And I also did say that I don't necessarily believe in the conspiracy theory is that she planned the death of Senzo Meiwa. I still think that one of the people, and I'm still zooming in on the person that got up, pushed, and walked out is the one that is responsible for the death of Senzo Meiwa, considering the fact that he know, he always knew the Malbertin house, that it had two bedrooms. And when he heard that his girlfriend is sleeping over at Senzo Meiwa's house in Malbertin, there was Kelly Kumal, and there's another man. I think this is where the whole thing began. And then the fact that when he entered the house, he did not greet people. Ah, come on, people. I don't know. Anyways, when you're listening to Tumelo, you can almost be convinced that he's telling the truth. But of course, when cross-examination is going to start, this is when we're going to start seeing the cracks. Anyways, I, the cracks were there with uh, Tumelo's uh, uh, evidence in chief. And uh, many people, if you are in denial of that, then sorry, uh, Tumelo did not actually hold water in his testimony in court today. So, of course, this is when the state arrested his evidence-in-chief questioning. And, uh, of course, uh, they had to adjourn the court because it was already almost time to end uh, the day. And so, we are going to be seeing cross-examination tomorrow. And I cannot wait to hear what the defense lawyers have in store for Dumelo, who was quite cocky and said, No, 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 we can continue. You can ask me. I don't mind. But anyways, uh, I cannot wait to hear what Mumalo has to say. I cannot wait to hear what Mshololo has to, uh, to say. And I cannot wait to see what the strategy is going to be from defense number who's def who is representing a suspect number one and two, and then Mnisi, and then all the way till Mshololo. I think it's going to be a packed full uh, cross-examination that is going to end up probably in tears as well as shouting and probably a complete disrespect coming from Dumelo Madala. But let's also not forget that tomorrow it is Tabo Besta and Dr. Nandrea Magutumana and 10 others appearing at the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court. So this one is going to be a little bit tricky for some of us who are following both cases. Which one do we go to? And which one do we report? <laughs> but I think it's going to be a, postpone a postponement. It's not going to... If it's not a postponement, then it's going to be a transference from the Bloom, Bloemfontein Magistrates Court to the Bloemfontein High Court. And probably this is the start of the trial. I don't know. We will see what the investigators have already collected, but where are the big fish? On Tabo Besta's side. And on Senzo Mewa's side, who killed Senzo Mewa? Who killed Senzo Mewa? That's, why, that's all that we want to know. Who killed Senzo Mewa? Anyways, guys, if you like the video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to click the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, my super thanks are turned on. Thank you so much to everybody that's super thanking this clan. Yeah, the clan is getting super thanks, you people. That is very, uh, I'm very grateful for that. And then I'm sure the clan is also very grateful for that. Also, do share this video far and wide. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think or what did you think about Tumelo Mazala's testimony or evidence in chief. And also, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow going forward? Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time with a new video. Goodbye.